This is Dofar in 1972. We're close to the coastal village of Murbat. It was here that a small troop of only nine SAS soldiers fought a running battle against 300 or more rebel warriors. The rebel guerrillas intended to launch their most vicious attack yet on the Sultan's forces. What they never realized was that they were about to come up against the SAS. There's, there's, there's tracer whacking into the building, the whole place is shuddering. Um, this is a major, a major confrontation, a major scene. Closer to the, the gun pit up on the right flank. That was their objective. We had a 25 pounder uh, manned by two Fijians and, and, and a small fort. If they'd have taken that position, the objective was to turn the gun, the 25 pounder, onto us. So it's getting lighter and I'm seeing hundreds of figures on the plane in front of me. They were everywhere and they'd also mounted a heavy machine gun position on the top of Jebel Ali. The battle had been raging at this stage for, I would estimate, three hours, maybe longer, four hours. And the only way you can uh, win this situation is air power. And uh, we finally get the jets in. And then, of course, um, they had to turn the heavy machine guns onto them. And one of them was hit immediately. That limped off into the 
horizon, which left just one jet. And then he runs out of armament. And then we're left um, with the, the rifles and machine guns and um, sheer willpower and determination to carry on the fight. At this stage of the game, we didn't know that um, Labba Labba had been wounded. Keeley then managed to get him on the Tokai, which is a walkie-talkie that we used to carry. And he said he'd been chinned, that was his last words, around a grazed his chin. Um, we then decided to reinforce the gun position because obviously that was the prime objective and the Adu had managed to get within grenade throwing distance now. You're talking about uh, serious um, conditions, you're talking about um, hand-to-hand -hand combat and we already knew Lava had um, been wounded so Mike Keeley decided he would run up under fire and take uh, Tommy Tobin who was a medic with him and uh, the pair of them out through the door and they just started running across this open ground and you could see all this green tracer zipping past them and I was firing them in with the, the, the 5-0 Browning doing the best I could you know opportunity targets and I was going, they're going to drop any minute. You could see this, this tracer zipping around them. How they got to the gun pit, I'll never know. Anyway, they made it. And um, Keeley got in, closely followed by Tommy Tobin, who unfortunately, as he um, jumped into the gun pit, was zapped straight um, through the jaw. He was out of the game. Mike Keeley had a, a radio with him, and he gave us a quick citrack. And the scene that he found was Labba Labba had been killed. Tack, the other Fijian was seriously wounded, shot through the back, through the spine, but he was propped up against a sandbag position. He carried on the fight. And um, Tommy Tobin was down, seriously wounded. Mike Keeley then gave us a, a, a quick battle appreciation. He identified main threats, which were the um, two assault groups from the, the ad who had managed to work themselves along the side of the wall of the fort and were only three or four meters away from the gun position. So I managed to get 5-0 Browning down onto the corners of the fort. And then the second wave of jets arrived and um, Bob's controlling them on the, um, the ground to air and they're getting good targets. Mike Keeley was also passing targets on and this time the, the jets um, cleared the area of the fort and steadily the fire started to decrease. We then see these figures appearing on the horizon at about 5,000 meters away across the plane on the, the right flank and they're all in extended line and we thought this is it, this is the second wave, they've got us surrounded but in fact what it was was um, G Squadron so with G Squadron supporting us, the jets finishing the business off, the firing is then dying down and they're starting to drift away, they knew it was a lost cause and we started to take account of the situation that we were in as far as um, ammunition state and um, casualties. And that's when the, the, the immensity of the, the situation dawns on you.